Yo, yo! What's up, TPL fans? It's your boy Dashing here to bring you the highlights from week 8. Without further ado, let's check it out. So the MVP goes to CC's performance. Let's check out the game and see how that went. So they leave Vanillox on the Sino. Switches to Silvalli Ground on the U-turn. Okay, so she was probably predicting like a... What do you call that move? Rock Blast. Skill Link Rock Blast. Goes for Parting Shot, gets the... Gets the Vanillox in safely, takes some Hail Chip. You can just set up screens here. Yep. Uh, what do you call that move? Yep, Freeze Dry is very free. Get some damage. Toad is probably gonna switch out here. He'd want to preserve another uh, rain turn. Goes for a freeze dry in case it uh, stayed in. Goes for a light screen. Goes for a water pulse. Very interesting. I think your play there was always to switch out. So you did kind of waste a turn there. Um, waste a turn of what do you call this? Um of your screens but yeah you can just get a defog here remove his screens Gudra uh, goes for earthquake parting shot brings back the vanillox um, should be able to set veil again but is outsped mm. I guess if you switched out um, that turn you would probably still be in range of the um, of the earthquake, I guess. So takes out the toad with um, freeze dry. Goes for the max. Wants to set up hail here. Rock blast. Revealing the Sincino is not skill link, so it's probably technician. Klefki comes out, but goes for light screen. That's a huge misplay. We don't know if he has reflect, but if he did, that is definitely a choke because the. The Arctozolt is going to be able to sweep here. You know, the Mons don't really want to take this. Goes for a freeze dry. Gets a crit. Okay. Hold up. So, of course that mattered. 100% um, mattered. But the Swampert would have been in range of... Um, it would have been in range of... What do you call this? Of like a Blastoise attack. So you could just smash there and uh, finish the job. So the Gudra will be able to just um, take it out here with the superpower. Well, yeah, actually, it could have just uh, went Lucario there, go for a CC twice, and it still would have been for um, a 4 0 win for a CC. But yeah, getting that, getting that really. Uh, made it so the Arctozolt got 4 kills. So yeah, amazing place. Um, huge misplay by uh, GS Koi Fish. I think this is James, if I'm not mistaken. You know, the goons, they fucking change their username all the time. So uh, I'm not really sure. That may be James. Alright. So for Tech of the Week, for Tech of the Week, actually, uh, this dude was... Uh, playing Hasin and I was saying in like the admin chat Hasin has been on a run probably the best run we've had in uh, TPL the way he's been you know 6 owing people with the same strat every week and yeah well, I, I actually made a joke about giving MVP to whoever beats, uh, beats Hasin so yeah uh, but you do get tech of the week this time it goes to Juicy Olive Mmm, so juicy. Let, let, let's do something here, all right? Let's, let's, yeah, all right, so juicy. All right, let's check out the game and see how that went. So they lead Turtonator here, brings out Electros, which is to, dra to Thundee, expecting the Dragon Pulse. Gets a crit, I believe, yep, huge crit. Goes for T-Bolt, puts him in range. I guess even if it didn't crit, you would still be in range of two T-Bolt. So, didn't really matter in that respect. Lele comes out, goes for Psyshock. 
Um, able to live, goes for revolt switch, preserves the electros as a sack. Um, Miss May just comes in on the Pyuku, can just toxic here, but switches to Metagross knowing the Pyuku is just gonna toxic, very well played. And Pyuku is in a position where he should he should have just switched out there. Now he's in a position where he has two months that's guaranteed to be toxic because he can't really do anything to the Metagross. So unless he wants to like stall PPs. Turtonator comes out, gets toxic. Switches to Electros on the Smash. Takes some chip, sacks the Electros. Brings out the Metagross. And here comes the tech. So it actually reveals to be Sash Metagross. And goes for Psych Up. Very interesting. He goes for Max, able to knock it out. This could have been so much more if he didn't have like the Pyuku to like, you know, somehow wall it. He goes for Lele here. Um, if he had like Thunder Punch, I think Thunder Punch was always the play because Thunder Punch could probably KO the Lele and you know, you're not just setting up the Lele there. You're probably gonna want to switch into Pyuku anyway. Very obvious play. But yeah, he even switches out to Haulucha. On the max guard i'm not sure why he even max guard there that uh that didn't really make any sense maybe he was expecting counter i guess but if you're gonna do counter you might as well do counter like bring him in you don't need to bring lele in right if that's the case so yeah it didn't make sense in that re in that respect but yeah he takes out the metagross goes for a moon blast on the on the sylveon the sylveon actually revealed to be uh, Life Orb. So Life Orb Sylveon does take out the Haulucha at plus one defense or Spidef. And is able to 1v1 one, one one the, the Lele here, no problem. He can just wish up. Doesn't really need to worry. Yep, just protect here. So it's really out of options here. You still have the, the Sylveon with a decent amount of health. Yuko comes out, switches to Miss Magus. Gonna just spread some toxic. Try to chip things in range of the Mega Mens. Goes for a T Bolt, does good damage. You can just switch out here because the recovery is very obvious. But yeah, I think. Yeah, I guess he didn't really have to switch out because it is like toxic, so it will eventually chip him down. It's probably a scarf set the way he switched out. Um, normally you would just go for a T bolt there, so yeah. So this is a scarf uh, Miss Mag. Um, hoping to take out the Salamence uh, if it's like, you know, not outspeeding anything. Goes for a soccer, uh, takes out the Mens. There was a few better ways to do that. Like you could have just, you know, sent out the Lando to like get intimidates, but. You know, at the end of the day, it worked out for him. 2-0. Could have been a 3-0, most likely. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, uh, tech of the week goes to Juicy Olive. Yes. Alright. So our last game here, the match of the week, is gonna go to Sebastian versus Koriki Riki. Alright. Let's check out the game, see how that went. So they lead Toxtricity on the combo, goes for a Volt Switch, gets a crit, uh, switches out as he goes for a Body Press. Very interesting. This kind of tells us that, you know, Ricky is a very, um, very safe player, right? He doesn't really want to take risk. So that already tells us this is, uh, this may be soundproof, right? This may be soundproof, but we'll see. Goes Iron Defense here on the Brave Bird. That's 22. Goes as lefties. Goes for a Toxic making a read. I'm not sure if that was a read or a misplay or a misclick, right? Goes for another Iron Defense. You can just roost here. So he revealed Toxic, Iron Defense, Body Press. So does he have like Drain Punch? Probably not. Yep. 
Yep. I think at that range, I think that did uh, scream that it was um, not soundproof. Was he would he would have been in range? But I, I guess the thing is, why would he like stay in on the on the uh, what do you call this on the toxicity if his only move was like body press and uh, toxic, right? It's walled completely. But yeah, Baliosan takes a Sunstrike. Lapras comes in, gets rocks. Reveals lefties. Skarm comes in on a DD. Switches out. Interesting. Um, the, what do you call this? The Arcanine reveals not to be boots. It's actually helmet. Helmet Arcanine. Alright. Interesting. So yeah, this is an interesting turn because he could have done this the turn before, but he decided not to. So he actually starts this max by taking 25%. If he did it like a few turns earlier, it wouldn't have been 25. Actually, if you saw that, he could have went for like, he could have stalled the max turns by going for a uh, ruse there instead of the body press like he only got so so much damage of that and he could have put the put the lapras out of max range or because so yeah he went for the ice move and then he could survive the water and then he died to the water move uh under rain so yeah i mean it's very similar to what happens here but at least he would have burned an extra turn of the screens uh that way goes for max knuckle on the what they call this Odino Mega Odino goes for Max Knuckle again. Odino's probably just gonna wish here because it it does like wall it completely. Yeah, yeah. So hold up there. So if you notice, um, Veil Veil kind of ended last turn, right? So he could have gotten like a good amount of damage there. So the the Odino wouldn't have been full, maybe uh, seventy percent, and then he gets like a crit there, putting it in nine percent. So yeah, I guess the way he played it, uh, the crit definitely mattered in this particular instance. The uh, otherwise the what do you call this? The Odino would have been around thirty-eight, which is basically. 26 after rock so it could die to pretty much anything at this point i guess depending on you know the bulk investment goes for sd on the arcanine arcanine goes for morning sun bait the baiting the what do you call this the play rough goes for flare blitz takes it out so unfortunately the greatest 50 50 in months uh doesn't pay off for um Sebastian is down 3 to 6, sacks the Odino 3 to 5, Tolgaleo goes for EQ. So it revealed Sunstrike EQ so far. It probably has recovery, right? Goes for Shadow Ball on the on the Lapras. Goes for Liquidation. Just good damage. Um probably will survive if uh if the Shadow Ball didn't KO because of the defense boost. Switches out the Tox on the Thundee. Thundee goes for Dark Pulse. Yep, good move. Sacks the Arcanine. So it's now down to 3 on 3. Alright. Um, Palisand versus the... What do you call this? The Thorn goes for Dark Pulse and go, and go Pulse again. We don't know. This could be like a Choice Thorn. Or a uh, Thundee, right? Choice Thundee. Maybe it's Choice. It goes for a Sub here. On the um, on the combo, so very interesting. Um, he switches out. Okay, that was a big choke. That was a huge choke. He could have knocked out the combo there, be at plus one, and then you know there's an incoming one. But he decided to not go for that. So very interesting. I think that was a huge choke on uh, Sebastian's part. Because Como was definitely in range of um, what do you call this? 
of a judgment and he does reveal a judgment later on so that was a joke now he actually reveals to be bulletproof which is kind of what he was baiting in the first turn but later on the way he switched out of the the talks kind of uh, gave the impression that yeah it is uh, uh, bulletproof which is which is actually good in the sense that it covers the uh, shadow ball um, weakness of Sol Galeo. So he's, he's actually uh, switching between these mons very well. You would think he would be losing at this point. But yeah. Sun still strike. Goes for earth power, does good damage. But the Palusan is gonna fall here unless he switches to ours. So yeah, it's gonna be three on one. Arceus versus the world goes for recover. Goes for Sun Steel Strike. I guess he was predicting like the sub there. If I were to imagine, goes for a toxic. Huge miss! Huge miss. That would have sealed uh that would have sealed the deal if he got the toxic there. Right? I mean he could have went for toxic the first turn, but you know, you you have these mind games with sub, right? Goes for morning sun here. Now, what actually Riki needs to do is to uh, keep breaking the subs until the Arceus is in a range where it cannot sub, and then he could, um, and then he can, you know, go for the uh, go for the toxic. So the toxic is guaranteed. Uh, the Arceus does reveal to be Life Orb, so that's very good for Riki. All he needs to do is spam the Steel Strike. Right? Just spam the Steel Strike because he's not getting extra recovery. He is, uh, he's getting worn down by Life Orb. So yeah, um, the, I mean, the downside of Steel Strike is, you know, you're, you're kind of taking... Um, yeah, I think this is a bad play from, uh, from Sebastian. This turn right here, this is the key turn. You should go for Toxic 100%, but he goes EQ. So that's a, that's another choke from Riki. Or that was maybe his first choke of the game. Uh, that was 100% guaranteed, right? 100% uh, guaranteed to um, go for the Toxic because he can't sub. And he kind of wants to protect because if he attacks, he won't KO you, and if you attack, you KO him. So, his play was always to recover there. So that was, um, this is this is kind of interesting in the way that as much misplays as Sebastian is playing this end game, uh, he is kind of rewarded by Riki making a crucial misplay, uh, especially with the toxicness earlier. So, uh, you could see how many turns are going by, right? The Toxic would have killed you by now, by uh, turn 60. And, you know, for you to attack, you would lose 10 more HP, so yeah. Um, unfortunately, he's in a position where he does do um, enough damage now. So he can just go for another Judgment that gets the KO. Como comes in, it's within range. And that's gonna be GG. It's Sebastian. Alright. Very interesting game. I really didn't want to cover this one because it took so long. But you know, um, the other games, we didn't really have a lot of games in comparison. Uh, a lot of the games were played very late, so you know, um, during the time of the recording, uh, the replays weren't available, so it is what it is. There was problem. I don't know if there was... Um, if there's gonna be a new uh, a game that's better than this but you know for what we have this is the best we got so yeah that's gonna be the highlights for week eight if you like the content like comment subscribe i'll see you guys on the next one cheers